witches and wizards and welcome one more time to Medicina Isiterum. I'm creating this video today for some guidance for those of you who are starting to create your practice and your altar space, because in my journey with altars, I have now reached a moment where I think I can finally share what tips I will have liked to know to be able to create the altars I create now. For me now, every altar I create is an expression of my deepest creativity in comfort with myself, my practice and my symbols and it's a reflection of my connection with nature and spirit. I am happy with the reflection of myself I see in my altars, and this is what I want to pass on. First steps. Creating an altar that satisfies your needs and looks beautiful to you takes time. It builds up with experience and practice. The first point to know at the time of constructing an altar is that the altar should be a reflection of a practice. This is, if you use a tarot or oracle deck to make readings for yourself and others, then that is your practice. If you use essential oils and a burner to meditate and draw your senses, then that is your practice. And all the elements of your practice should make a part of your altar, so that it becomes a space where you have to go when you want to practice. A place where all your tools are at hand as well as your devotion. So the first definition of an altar is that it is a place for your spiritual practice. Forget about an altar that is abandoned on a corner with a little figurine and an incense that you sometimes change and it's there for decoration. That is not an altar. An altar is a place you go to when you seek your personal practice. The more elements you integrate to your personal practice, the bigger and more complex your altar will become and you'll need increasingly more space, more levels, and more storage. If you're dreaming of those complex, convoluted altar spaces you see so pretty on Instagram or Pinterest, then my suggestion is that you get involved in some new practices with new tools. This way, the stuff in your altar will have a true meaning for you. But don't feel embarrassed or disencouraged to start with a small, modest altar of a few elements. It's more important that the elements you have have a meaning to you than having loads of paraphernalia you bought on Amazon and you never use or connect with. Every element needs to have a story. I like the word element here with capital letters. This is because I mean elements as items as well as elements of nature. This is an interesting and important subject, well known in altar creation, that we need to represent the elements in our altar. Personally, I follow no rules on which elements I place or where I place them. I just have the elements naturally displayed in my altar, and this is how I work with them. Fire. Candles. Fire started in the cauldron from alcohol burning. Charcoal for burning different things magic black matches, palo santo on fire, sources of light, earth, incense, dried or fresh herbs, sometimes flowers for summer solstice, or fruits for offerings like apples in autumn or in bulk, and pumpkins in Halloween or Samhain, fruits of the earth, seeds, animal bones, air, aromas, essential oils, Sound also counts as the element of air, so bells, singing bowls, any instruments. Water. This is very simple. From a little vessel with fresh water as an offering, to any liquids, wines, ales, mother tinctures, batch flowers, plant medicines. And this is all for now. On my next video, I'm going to show you some of the practices you can do at your altar with all the elements. Thanks for watching. See you next time.